Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final Whale Education Month lesson. Now that we have learnt all about the extraordinary evolution and amazing adaptations of whales and dolphins, it's time to look at some of the threats they face and how those threats are linked to their evolution and adaptations. This presentation contains some images of whales and dolphins that have been hurt and these images might not be suitable for younger children to view. A threat to cetaceans is something that could cause disturbance, injury or danger to them. This can be a natural threat like a predator trying to eat them or a non-natural threat caused by humans, for example being hit by ships. Unfortunately there are lots of threats in the ocean that whales and dolphins have to deal with. Cetaceans have evolved over millions of years to survive in their environments and their bodies are perfectly adapted to suit their lifestyles and habitats. The modern whales and dolphins that are living in the world now have been living in the ocean for hundreds of thousands of years. They have evolved in an ocean that had many other animals living in it but there were no humans using it like they do today. Humans have been on the planet for a very short time compared to the cetaceans and in the last few hundred years they have changed many natural environments. The oceans are now full of signs and activities of humans, some of which can be very dangerous for whales and dolphins that simply are not able to adapt to them. Let's take a look now at some of those human-made threats and why they are a problem for whales and dolphins. We will be looking at noise pollution, ship strike, bycatch, climate change and captivity. We will then finish by looking at some places where you can see whales and dolphins in the wild here in the UK. Firstly, noise pollution. The toothed cetacean species have evolved to use echolocation to find their food. They're very good at picking up sounds and hearing noises. So good in fact that they're actually quite sensitive to loud noises and a noise that is much louder than any natural sounds they may hear in the ocean could really frighten or even damage a toothed cetacean. Today humans use the ocean for so many things like fishing and shipping things and people around the world. There are millions of boats on the ocean and lots of things being built on or near the ocean such as oil rigs and wind turbines. All this building and boat activity can be very noisy and the whales and dolphins haven't had time to adapt to cope with these noises. When lots of human made noises are happening we call this noise pollution and it can be harmful to cetaceans. Whales and dolphins that rely on echolocation to find their prey can struggle to hear their prey over the noise pollution. Some very loud sounds can really frighten cetaceans and cause them to become lost or sometimes stranded on beaches or to accidentally swim up rivers. A threat to the large whales is being hit by ships. As we learnt, whales grew to be so big so they could eat more food and have energy to swim long distances on their migration and to protect themselves from predators. Because some whales are so big it means they're not always very quick or agile. Some whales like fin whales can swim fast in one direction but aren't always good at turning and changing direction quickly. These big baleen whales are therefore at risk from being hit by ships, something we call ship strike, as they can't always move out of the way in time. This can injure and even kill the whales and is a threat for them in areas where there is lots of shipping activity. Baleen whales also haven't evolved to have the same excellent hearing as the toothed whales and so sometimes they do not hear the ship in time. Whales have evolved to be big and escape predators but human made ships are even bigger and faster than whales and it can be disastrous for the whale if they collide with each other. As we know, whales and dolphins are marine mammals that live in the oceans but still have to come up to the surface to breathe. They have been able to do this for many millions of years without any obstacles in their way. 
But sadly, now humans have left so much rubbish and waste in the sea that sometimes whales and dolphins become entangled or caught up in rubbish and can't get to the surface, which means they drown. Bycatch is the word we use to describe animals that have accidentally been caught up in fishing nets. Sadly, as well as being at risk from all the fishing nets being used to catch fish, whales and dolphins can also get caught in lost or abandoned fishing nets floating freely in the sea, and this is called ghost gear. Another big threat that whales and dolphins are facing is marine litter. Marine litter is any man-made object that has been lost or disposed of in the sea. A large amount of marine litter is plastic, a material that never breaks down or disappears, unlike natural materials like wood and paper. It is thought that humans dump between 8 and 13 million tonnes of plastic in the ocean every year and it can be found floating on the surface, like this plastic bottle, all the way through the water column and right down into the deep ocean. This marine litter is very dangerous for whales and dolphins. As we learn in lesson two, many of the baleen whales have raucal pleats on their throats to help them scoop up lots of food filled water. But if there is lots of plastic floating in the water too, they can accidentally swallow the plastic and it can make them very unwell and can cause them to die. If you'd like to learn more about marine litter, you can look at the Whale Education Month learning resources from 2018 or look at the ORCA lessons on our website. Another threat that whales and dolphins are facing at the moment is climate change. Climate change is the name we use to describe how the world's air temperatures, sea temperatures and weather is changing. It is normal for the Earth's climate to change now and again, often in different years and different seasons. But human pollution, such as toxic fumes and chemicals in the air, is making the Earth too warm too quickly, which means we get unpredictable seasons and strange weather. All the animals and plants have evolved adaptations to suit the climate in their habitats. But the changes in the climate are happening so quickly that the animals are not able to adapt quickly enough to suit them. As we learn in lesson two, many species of whales and dolphins have blubber to keep them warm in cold waters where they live. If the sea temperature heats up too much, those animals will find that they get too hot and we'll have to move to colder places to stay cool. Whales and dolphins have evolved and adapted to live a life out in the big open ocean. They have evolved to become fast and agile by developing adaptations like streamlined bodies and strong tails with flukes to propel them through the water. They have dorsal fins to help stabilize them and they have big brains to help them communicate and hunt and remember their long migration routes. Right now, there are around 3,000 cetaceans living in captivity, which means they are living in a zoo or aquarium, sometimes known as dolphinariums. The species kept in captivity around the world are normally dolphin species, such as bottlenose dolphins, orcas and belugas. They are usually kept in tanks or in sea pens. Most places that keep them in captivity have them so that people can visit them for entertainment or to learn about them. Some of these places are also rescue centres for injured dolphins. The topic of cetacean captivity causes lots of discussion as many people believe it is a threat to cetaceans because it is bad for their health, whereas other be others believe it is a good thing. Let's now take a look at some of the problems with captivity and how cetaceans might be negatively affected by it because of their adaptations. Then we will look at some of the reasons why some think cetacean captivity could be a good thing. Your class can then pause and discuss this topic in more detail. Now let's look at how captivity could be a threat to cetaceans. Firstly, lack of space. 
One of the main things that is a problem for cetaceans in captivity is space. They are usually kept in pools like this one. Although some of these pools are pretty big and contain lots of water, they are still nowhere near as big or as deep as the oceans that the whales and dolphins swim around in the wild. As we learnt from lessons 1 and 2, whales and dolphins have evolved to have streamlined bodies with strong muscles in their tails so they can swim fast and catch their prey. Their bodies are adapted to do lots of swimming and travelling long distances. If they don't get the exercise they need, their muscles could become weak and this could lead to problems with their health. Many dolphins in captivity do take part in training programmes to help them get the exercise they need, but many people believe that this is not the same and not as good as the exercise they get in the wild. Secondly, psychological problems. Dolphins' brains are big compared to their body size. As they have evolved to become better at hunting and surviving in the environments, it has meant that they have been able to spend more time playing, learning and socialising with other dolphins. This has led to them becoming very clever and they have the ability to feel emotions like jealousy, empathy and care about their families. When dolphins are in captivity, there isn't always a lot for them to do. In bear tanks, there are not many features to explore, like different habitats and other animals to experience, and many captive dolphins show signs of feeling bored and frustrated, which can make them ill. And thirdly, how they are caught. Some dolphins that live in captivity are born there and have only ever known a life in captivity but some of them have been caught from the wild. This process of catching wild dolphins for aquariums and dolphinariums is very stressful for the dolphins as they are separated from their wild families and sent hundreds of miles away from their home in the ocean. Sometimes the journey from the ocean to a tank is so stressful and scary for dolphins that they can die en route or suffer from serious health problems. Many species of dolphins are rare or endangered and taking them from the wild to put in captivity can have a bad effect on the amount of them in pods in the wild. These are just some of the reasons why captivity is seen as a threat to cetaceans in relation to their evolution and adaptations. But are there any benefits to whales and dolphins being kept in captivity? Zoos and aquariums are great places for learning about animals and it gives people the chance to see animals that they may never have the chance to see in the wild. People get to see them and learn to love them and it can be a great opportunity to teach people about looking after animals and wildlife conservation. Many people have never had the chance to see a dolphin in the wild before and seeing them in captivity might be the only chance they get. What with all the threats that whales and dolphins have to deal with in the wild, such as marine litter, noise pollution and ship strike, some people think that life might be safer for whales and dolphins that live in captivity. If you would like to, you can now pause this video and do the discussion activity and have a discussion with your class about whale and dolphin captivity, or you can wait until the end of the video. If you would love to see whales and dolphins but don't want to visit them in captivity, an alternative option would be to visit them in the wild. Many people think that you have to go to very warm and tropical places to see whales and dolphins in the wild, but here in the UK it's possible to see around 30 different species in our seas. Seeing whales and dolphins in the wild is a very exciting and special experience. You can watch how they behave in their natural habitats and sometimes they are curious and will approach boats. Whale and dolphin watching doesn't have to be expensive either. You can book to go on wildlife watching boats, but a cheaper and just as good way to see them is by watching them from the land. And there are lots of great spots around the UK where you can do this. Also, 
If you have ever travelled by ferry, it's worth keeping an eye out for marine mammals as they can pop up anywhere. Let's look at some whale and dolphin hotspots around the UK where you have a good chance of seeing them. Firstly, let's look at some places in Scotland. The islands of Shetland and Orkney are right up off the north coast of Scotland and these are not only beautiful places but they are famous places for seeing killer whales or orcas, pilot whales, humpback whales, minke whales and many dolphin species. The Hebrides is also known as the Western Isles of Scotland and are very good for seeing whales and dolphins too. Here you can see dolphins like this Risso's dolphin, bottlenose dolphins, common dolphins and minke whales. The Moray Firth is another excellent place in Scotland to see dolphins. Here it's possible to see the biggest bottlenose dolphins in the world, reaching nearly 4 metres long. They often chase salmon up the River Spey and you can watch them from the river bank. All along the east coast of Scotland there are great places to see other cetaceans too, like pilot whales, minke whales or even humpback whales and orcas. Now let's look at some places in England. The coasts of the counties Yorkshire, Lincolnshire and Northumberland look out onto the North Sea, which is a great place for whales and dolphins. You can see them from cliff tops on land, or you can go and see them in wildlife watching boats. Here you can see minke whales, dolphins and harbour porpoises like the one in this photo. Devon, Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly are in the southwest of England and here there are many different types of whales and dolphins living. People often see pods of dolphins like common dolphins swimming and jumping and sometimes bottlenose dolphins and humpback whales are seen here too. The Irish Sea and the west coast of Wales is another place that is full of marine life and you can see harbour porpoises, dolphins and minke whales here. There is a place in Wales called Cardigan Bay and that has a group of bottlenose dolphins that live there and you can see them from the land and in tour boats. And finally Ireland. The west coast of Ireland looks out onto the Atlantic Ocean here the water gets deeper and it's possible to see larger whales as they travel past the UK on their migration, such as fin whales and humpback whales. These are some of the whale and dolphin hotspots around Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland, but not all of them. It's possible to see cetaceans anywhere by the sea. Take a moment to pause this video and look at where you live on the map you can see where your nearest whale and dolphin hotspot is. You could also do some research to find locations near your home that are good for whale and dolphin watching. So let's recap what we have learnt in this lesson. We know whales and dolphins evolved to live in the oceans a very long time before humans arrived on Earth. There is now lots of human-made threats that whales and dolphins are at risk from there are many sites in the UK where cetaceans live. An alternative to visiting captive cetaceans would be to see them in the wild in the UK. Thank you for taking part and watching this third and final video for Whale Education Month. We now have some activities for you to take part in. If you would like to learn more about whales and dolphins, including their evolution, adaptations, and conservation threats, you can look at the ORCA lessons found on our website.